Hi everybody, time for another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Utterly, brought to you by the Danny app. I'm Danny Ackerman, and this is this week's happenings. Um, this is April, yes, April, and it is Autism Awareness Month. Uh, this is a subject near and dear to my heart, as my little guy is autistic. So I've been dealing with this for about seven years now. And each April, I run some higher priced items with uh, a percentage going to uh, Autism Speaks through GivingWorks on eBay. eBay makes this really easy to do. It's as much as checking off a box that you wanted to uh, give to GivingWorks and selecting your charity. For me, that's Autism Speaks. There are hundreds to choose from. So if you have a favorite charity or something that affects your life, this is a great opportunity to give back and I highly encourage it. So I had a fantastic sale uh, just uh, this past week. It was a large sculpture and uh, it was signed Denner. And I found it at the thrift shop and thought, you know, this is just the kind of thing that I can sell. Brought it home, paid five bucks for it and it turned out to be a famous artist named Dorothy Denner and she was popular in the mid-century and it did have that mid-century look to me which was one of its appeals and it was a reproduction so I thought eh it's a reproduction you know whatever and I did a little research on Google and found that a similar reproduction actually the same reproduction had been estimated to sell between seven and eight hundred dollars at a, a live auction house so with that, I started it at auction at $9.95 and I set a reserve of $200 to kind of play with it and see what would happen. The bidding got up to about $114 and I was happy. I was going to lower the reserve thinking, okay, I'll let it sell for that. And I got an email from someone who was offering me $600 if I would add the buy it now to the auction. Now. I don't normally do this. My advice to you would be if somebody comes in and offers you a buy it now price on something, start counting your money because that means the item is worth a lot more than you thought it was. So I kind of checked this one out because $600 sure did sound nice on a $5 purchase. So I did my homework. I checked out the buyer. They were an art dealer. They bought a lot of expensive art. So I thought to myself, I'd have to have two of these guys bidding on this to really bump up that price to that. So I went ahead and I didn't end that auction. What I did is started a fixed price uh, listing, cost me five cents, and I let them know they bought it, they paid, then I went over and ended the auction. Now. Word of warning, if you're ever going to end an auction early, make sure that you cancel any bidding action that's on it. Otherwise, you're going to be obligated to sell it to the high bidder. In this case, I, I didn't have to worry about it because it was a reserve and the reserve hadn't been met. So I was safe on that. So, all is well. That shipped. They're happy. I'm happy. And I got to take some more money out and go shopping. And then one of the items I found was this glass vase that I found at a Salvation Army in the boutique section. Now I know I hear a lot of sellers saying, oh, I stay away from that area because that's where they put all the high priced stuff. Well, they had this little gem priced at 20 bucks. And to most people that would seem like a high price to pay for a glass vase. But I knew it was Murano and I knew it was mid-century Murano. So mid-century is hot. You get that theme here? So uh, it even had this old rusty metal flower frog still stuck down inside. And it was kind of crusty, dirty. So I brought it home. I thought it would be worth two, three hundred dollars, which I'd have been more than happy with. And much to my surprise, it's, uh, it's now listed for two thousand um, dollars. You may have to sit on something like this for a while because it does take that right collector, that right buyer to come along and find it known as a, a long tail item if you're talking about things uh, that take a while to sell. So I have no problem waiting. And the reason is that those buyers do come along. So I got this at $2,000 with best offer. Uh, we'll see what happens. Now something that I bought 
back in uh, the fall of last year was this early American press glass pitcher. Um, now, I didn't know the exact pattern, but I knew it had a fox and a bird. Anything with figural animals or people, that kind of thing, those are really desirable patterns usually. Uh, it turned out that this was the only piece that this particular company made. And it is from the uh, late 1800s. It's early American press glass. And I priced it at $1,000 in my store. And I've been sitting there. I had an offer of $300 a couple months back, and I turned it down. And I didn't quite want to let it go yet. Um, I got another offer this morning for uh, $325. I countered them at $450. They came back at 375 and I thought, you know, this is a real live buyer. I'm not going to let this pass me by for 50 bucks. So I went ahead and accepted the offer. So I made some really good money on this piece. I'm sad to see it go because this is what I collect. Um, but it was a lot of profit on this piece and it pretty much paid for my trip to Kansas. So i um, very happy with that. Sometimes you have to wait for that right buyer to come along. So it is yard sale season. I am very excited about this and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about haggling at yard sales. So here's one of my methods. If there are several items at a yard sale, I start making a pile. And a lot of times they'll price some items but not other items. So if you can kind of get an idea how they do their pricing, you can tell whether you have somebody who is really trying to get rid of their stuff or if you have like a a lazy eBayer, uh, somebody who doesn't want to go through the process of putting it on eBay, but they want eBay prices. Well, I try to stay away from those. So I make a pile of all the stuff I want to get, and I have kind of a number rolling in my head that I'd like to pay for it. And when I come up to them to get the price, a lot of people just kind of look and will throw a number at you. They don't want to sit there and count each piece. Some people will count each piece. They'll come up with a number and that'll either be acceptable to you or it won't. And if it's not, come back with a number that's acceptable to you. People will barter. I know this from actually holding yard sales as well as out there and purchasing out of people will haggle with you. And uh, this is true for estate sales too. I went yard sailing this past weekend with my friend Lisa Metzler and we happened upon an estate sale. And it was an odd state estate sale. Uh, prices were kind of all over the place. I found stuff, you know, for a dollar here, a dollar there, up to things that were priced at like a hundred dollars that should have been a dollar here, a dollar there. And again, I made a pile, kind of started to get a feel for what they were going to charge me for some of these pieces. Well, Lisa found an Elvis book, and she's a big FBAer, and she found that this book was selling. I don't, I, it, it was over a hundred dollars. Well. She asked the lady, how much for this book? And the lady goes, 40. She goes, oh, no, I can't pay that much. And the lady goes, well, what do you want to pay? She goes, oh, I couldn't give you more than 20 for it. And she goes to set it down. The lady goes, I'll take 20 for it. Score! So it just goes to show you never know what somebody is going to say no to or accept. And the worst they can do is say no, and you put it back. Nothing lost. So really learn to haggle. You can up your profit margins that way, and it, it kind of gets fun. So, and speaking of sailing, I like to call it sailing, uh, I have some special workshops coming up. As you know, the events are coming up, the eBay on location, the eBay radio party, and I'm really excited to have put together these special workshops uh, where I will be taking you out either yard sailing or thrift shopping or even an antique store what, whatever it is that that suits uh, those of us that are going to be involved because this is going to be a very intimate workshop where we really get into the meat and bones of making some good money on these antiques and collectibles so I want to take you out sourcing and I want to help you get things you normally wouldn't get you would put those back you would have interest but you would put them back because you weren't too sure and I want to help you kind of expand your horizons and start picking up those things. And I'm going to take you all the way through the process of actually buying those items and learning how to spot them and then taking them back and getting them researched and listed. I will teach you my little super secret methods for doing all that. And uh, there's only five spots available for each workshop. So I'm doing one in Denver 
right before the eBay on location. So that's going to be the Wednesday before the actual eBay on location starts. So if you're in the Denver area or you can get to the Denver area, uh, please uh, sign up for that. It's going to be a great profitable learning experience. And then I'm going to have two workshops after the eBay radio party here in Las Vegas. And uh, those are going to take place on a Friday and Saturday. And those are more likely to cover yard sales uh, because of them being on the weekend. But again, if there's an estate sale or a thrift shop that, that suits us better, we will custom make that workshop to those of you who uh, sign up and want to be part of that. And again, we'll spend the morning sourcing and finding great stuff that you wouldn't normally buy. And we'll go back to my office and I'm going to help you every step of the way get those items listed in the most profit-filling way possible. And we're going to watch those items sell for you. So these are workshops that are actually going to end up paying for themselves in the long run. And uh, join us again this week on the Ask the Danny App Show. Be sure and submit your questions or if you want an utter review on an item, uh, you can go over to the dannyapp.com and submit your questions or your items that way. And we would love to talk to you on Sunday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And with that, I'm going to close and say see you till next week.